In a previous project, I made this engineering table as a toy prop, and it's meant to be one giant computer screen. It came out quite well, and I'm going to be making a lot more computer screens in upcoming projects, so I wanted to perfect the process, and figured I'd make a quick tutorial for your own projects. We'll go through all the details in a minute, but your basic options are between overhead projector slides or water slide decals as the basis for your terminal screens. The OHP slides are just clear pieces of plastic that'll go through your printer, depending on brand of course. And you can obviously cut these down to any size and shape that you want, which makes them perfect for computer screens. The decal paper uses a regular printer as well and can also be cut down, but it requires a bit more post-processing. We'll go over the full process soon, but basically you're covering it in multiple coats of clear acrylic varnish. Both materials have their pros and cons, and I do lean towards the OHPs, but neither is perfect out of the box, and both require the same finishing step that you'll see towards the end of the video. Before we can look at the OHPs though, we first need some graphics that'll appear on our screens. I tried out Critter for this, which is a free Photoshop alternative. It works okay and it gets the job done, but there's a few quirks to the interface that just make the whole process a little uh, frustrating though. But we do get this Autobot symbol designed and then sent to the floor printer. It's important to note that you can generally only print on one side of these OHPs, and with the brand I'm using, there's a small notch in the bottom right corner that shows you which way to put it into the printer. I also designed and 3D printed two types of holders for these screens. In my mind, I want these to be freestanding holograms, but we'll see how that effect plays out. Finally, I paint the inside of the holders white just to help with dispersing the light, and please excuse the light spoiler for later in the video. And these are the OHPs straight from the printer with all the excess plastic removed. The pros of the OHPs for me are that the printing is pretty crisp and clear, and the shininess of the slide itself really helps sell that it's a real computer screen. The obvious con though is that it's way too transparent which is only emphasized when you place it in front of a white background. As I said before, neither the OHPs or water slides will work straight for the printer, and both require a post-processing step, but I wanted to show you where we're starting with these. If for no other reason, this may be the effect that you're going after. But maybe that'll change with some lighting? I wanted to try them out first with these tea lights because they're very common and popular for other people's builds. They're also low cost and require zero electronics experience. The rainbow LED has some interesting effects, but it doesn't really produce the hologram effect that I'm going for with this. Even with the lights turned off and my camera exposure changed to match what I'm seeing in person, the cylinder OHP still needs contrast with the background to even be visible. That said though, some of the colors make the Autobot logo disappear entirely and then reappear, and that could be an interesting effect for someone's diorama. This flickering LED had a similar result. For this though, I see it being used as a malfunction effect. For completeness, I put together this higher power LED and the results are a little bit better, but still not great and it's still going to require that further step that I told you about earlier. The semicircular design that I made isn't much better, but it is helped by the fact that you need to put a white background on it. For the water slide decals, I start out with another design session in Critter and FreeCAD. Maybe I'm just too used to Photoshop, but Critter was a real pain in the butt with just trying to add text to a decal. And I don't think I'll bother using the software again. Let me know in the comments if you know any other free Photoshop alternatives. I've just discovered Photopea and it looks interesting, but let me know your thoughts. And on this test, I'm going to have a tall computer terminal with two screens on it. And while the terminal's on the 3D printer, I send the decals to the floor printer. The decal paper is essentially a clear film on a paper backing. 
And after you soak it in water, the decal will slide off this backing and you can place it on another surface. Hence the name water slide decal. Before you do that though, you have to seal in the inks with multiple coats of this clear acrylic varnish. It might recommend only three coats, but I double that at least, because if it's not properly sealed, the second it hits the water, the ink is all gonna run out. Ask me how I know. For this reason, I recommend printing extra sacrificial decals that you can test in your water. And if the ink runs in these tests, you can just go back and apply more of the varnish. Oh, and I also put an LED strip inside the terminal just for some even lighting. The major annoyance of the decals is that it just takes so much prep work to get right. And to use that as a computer screen like we need, you also need another piece of clear plastic to put it on. I had some plastic sleeves lying around, so I just cut out some squares for this. To apply the decal, you want to soak it in water for 30 to 60 seconds, although other brands may recommend different times. Basically, you're just waiting for the edges to start curling up. The pro tip is also to dunk the plastic surface into water and have it wet, and that's going to make sliding the decal on so much easier. If the decal stuck to the paper and you're a little skittish about dunking it back in water, you can just run a blade along the edges just to loosen things up, and then you'll be golden. This is where the second weakness of the decals comes up, which is its habit of wrinkling and trapping bubbles. To be fair, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair. This is a fairly large and flat surface. To be fair. And the strength of the decals is to conform to any surface you put it on, which wouldn't be possible with OHP slides. And different brands may be harder or easier to work with. So let me know in the comments if you've tried them before and which brands you could recommend. At this stage in the process, the decal paper is a little more opaque than the OHP slides, but it's similar if worse quality than the OHPs for a lot less work and time. The other advantage of the OHP slides is that they retain the glossiness of the plastic, which continues to sell the screen effect, even when the power's off. So while decals have their uses, and you should still keep them in mind for certain applications, I think I'll be sticking with OHP slides going forward. And so let's look at how we can improve the effect of all of these screens. The problem we have with both OHPs and the decals is that they're just too translucent, as well as the fact that they just don't light up very much. And the solution is actually ridiculously simple and comes in a can. This frosted glass spray can be found in any hardware store or online. And you can probably find a similar product in craft aisles. You spray it on in several light coats like you would any spray paint. And this takes three to four light coats. And I imagine you could probably achieve different effects by having fewer or more coats. That would affect the opacity. And these look fantastic now. One of the OHP problems was that they just weren't legible before, especially that dark one. But here, now they'll both work in dioramas even when they're not backlit. You'll also notice that they still retain some translucency. And now, even those weak tea lights from before are powerful enough to light these. And again, I adjust the camera's exposure to match what I'm seeing in person. On the computer terminal, you can really see how the blue hides the bloom of the lights behind it. The black isn't as opaque as I'd want, 
but that might just require some more coats of spray. Overall though, these results are fantastic, and it confirms for me that OHP slides are going to be the technique I use going forward. For completeness, I'll discuss some of the other things I tried to add opacity. The first was to use some sandpaper to scuff up the back of the plastic. I also had a glue stick on hand and figured I'd just see what happens when it dried. And it didn't do much. The sandpapering had some effect, but it was actually pretty negligible. It's also quite time insensitive for the result that it gives. And I think it'd be hard to get consistent results with this, especially across dozens of screens. The next thing was a technique I saw on technology connections where Michael wanted to frost up the glass of a lamp. And in it, he created a concoction of white glue, water, and white paint. I mixed up a batch of this and applied it to one of the holograms, and it actually works quite well. And it reminds me a lot of the frosted spray. Although my application here is a bit sloppy. I also experimented with some black paint instead of white just to see, and well, <laughs> that was a non-starter. But then I tried replicating the recipe again, this time intending to use inks because inks have some inherent transparency to them, but I just couldn't get it right. It might have been because I had to switch the brand of glue, or I didn't get the ratios of ingredients just right, but something just didn't work here and it just ended up as a giant useless mess. I'm also struggling to think of a use case where this would be better for me than the frosting spray. This could be useful with different coloured inks to tint the glass that you're using, but do keep in mind that this is pretty time intensive and very, very messy. While I give you my thanks for sticking around, here are the obligatory beauty shots. And if you like this tutorial, maybe you could hit the yellow subscribe button. I hear it plays a funny animation now when you do. I'll be back to a regular diorama build next time, but let me know in the comments if there's any other parts of the process you'd want some tutorials on. And just for a note on my schedule, I'm aiming to upload every two to three weeks, so I hope you stick with me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.